Hey, welcome back, it's Ben again. Today we're gonna to be looking at a quick bot you can make for Discord that's able to save images from the chat and save it to the bot's directory. Hey, a couple quick things before we start. I noticed that only about 10% of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you find something that's useful today that helped you out, maybe it'll earn your subscription. Also, big shout out to the person who originally created the code for this. There was a little bit of a snippet I found on Stack Overflow when I was trying to learn how to do this and I couldn't really find a great video tutorial on how to do it. So I kind of fixed up their code a little bit, made it work for a better example. And here we go. And I'll be putting their information on the screen and it'll also be in the GitHub. So let's get started. So to get started, I've opened up a new PyCharm project here. That's what I'm gonna be using. I'm not gonna go over the whole tutorial on how to create a Discord bot. There's plenty of tutorials how to do that and I might make one of my own later but I'll show the setup for this bot specifically. So I'm just in a new project and I set up a new virtual environment using Conda, but you can use the built-in virtual environment if you want. Again, it doesn't really matter if you're just setting this up, for example. So let's just create a new file. I'm gonna just call this, let's call it save image because this bot will be saving images. So, all right, so we need a few different imports. Let me scroll that in a little bit. Okay, so of course we're gonna need Discord, whoops. So we're gonna be using from discord.exe import commands. And we'll need to pip install that in a moment, but let's get the rest of them in here. We're gonna be using UUID for creating the image names. We're gonna give them unique names just using uh, UUID. Uh, we're gonna need requests. So that's gonna get our image from Discord server. And we're going to be using it's shutil, okay. So we gotta import a few things. Uh, sorry, I can't see the, the button for it, so I'm just gonna open up the console down here. You actually can't see that, so let me move that up. All right, so we just need a few of these things. So over here you can see I'm inside of the uh, my virtual environment. So, a few things. So let's get discord.py. And it looks like we have UID in shutil already, so let's just get uh, requests. So those things will download. And it looks like we are successful with that. Okay. Usually takes a second for these to start filling. Okay, there they go. Not red anymore. All right. So we're going to do the normal bot setup. So, whoops, if I could spell correctly. So we're going to do client.commands bot and the command prefix and i'm just going to be using a period for this one because i just like having my command start with a period you don't have to do this as a command either you could technically do it as a on message if you want to do it that way but i thought it made a little bit more sense to have it as a command all right so we're also going to get the client.event this is just going to be we don't need this one actually this is just going to tell us that our bot is online and ready to go so this is gonna be the onReady function or method, whatever they technically call it on this. And we're just gonna use the default, oops, bot is ready. Again, you can change it to be whatever you want it to say. Oops. All right, so now let's get going to it. This one's gonna be a the actual command one. So client.command and we're going to use asynchronous def and this one this one i called the command save because i thought it make more sense so when you when you're in the discord chat and you want the bot to save an image we can just say dot save with the image which i thought made sense so we use ctx which is what, ctx which is for context in this case and again, I should mess I should mention that this bot is mostly used for tutorial or example purpose where it has a lot of the bare bones that you would need. This probably isn't something you'd actually want to use like on a real server. It's probably something you want to build build into another command of some sort how to do that. Like I'm planning to make um, combining this with object detection. If you haven't seen one of my tutorials for that, go check that out if you want. But that's where that my idea was coming from, if that's even possible. But I need to know how to download an image, so this is kind of the background information for that. So I recommend using an exception block here because if someone passes in a image or if they just type in save, just dot save, but there's no image, then we're gonna get an error. And just to avoid having that error, we're just gonna throw an exception instead. 
So what we want is to have a variable called utx, or sorry, cr url equals ctx. So that's the context of the message. So context dot message. So this is the information that we're actually pulling from the chat message. And then we're saying dot attachments. I did not attach mints. There we go. So that's going to be anything that's added on to a chat message in Discord, which can be a file or an image or anything like that. So we want the first index of this list and we want, what did I say? We want to say dot URL. That's going to find the part of the attachments list that has URL in it. And you'll see why we need that in a moment. Cool. So let's move on. Let's do an accept except here we go and this is going to be an index error if it doesn't work so because if the if we don't have any attachments we're just going to get an error and it's going to be index out of range because there'll be nothing in there so we just want to be able to go past this and also i did this backwards this should be over here and i like to put print commands in between just so you can see what's going on especially in the console and in the actual Discord attach, Discord uh, chat, sorry. So, oops, no attachments. I may have spelled that wrong. Yeah, I definitely did. Attach, oh my god, I'm deleting all the wrong stuff. Attachments, there we go. So, if we don't get anything in there, we're just going to print out no attachments. So that fixes that for us. And we're also going to send to the chat itself. So we're going to say ctx.send, which is one of the context commands we can use, or context methods, I should say. So this is actually going to show up in the Discord chat. So we're just going to say no attachments detected. Oops. Again, you can make it say whatever you want. You don't even have to have this line here if you don't want to. So that's good. Uh, whoops. And so next, we're just going to add an else case for our in else case for our accept block or try block i should say um so this is going to happen if we don't get any errors which is what we want so what we've got to say is if url 0 to was it 26 yeah 26 equals i'm actually just going to copy paste this from over here so again a lot of this part comes from that stack overflow i found but i've made a lot of these edits to make it a little bit more user friendly and again, I will be crediting the original author for that. So we use this right here, this HTTPS cdn.discord.app. So this is where if you go to the web, if you click on a picture on Discord and you sh uh, say show original, it'll bring you to a, HT uh, a web page and I have the image on it. So we're looking to see if our URL part of attachments, which is up here, contains this. Because if it contains this, well, then we can look for it and we can download it. So zero to 26 right here. It basically checks to make sure that the first zero to 26 characters in URL contains this. So cool, let's continue. So next we're gonna say r equals requests. So this is where our, our requests import comes from, which is good for finding HTTP requests. Um, let's see, we want request.get and we just wanna see URL, whoops, URL, stream equals true whoops here we go so that's going to get our request to the HT, http service next we're going to name our image so i just like to call it image name and we're saying string again there's lots of different ways you can do this this is just the way that i thought to set it up there's probably better ways to do it too but we're going to use uuid dot uuid4 which is the method of creating uuid well which is a unique unique id i don't know examples but basically like unique identifier so it creates this long strand of numbers and i believe the four one just makes it so it's like four four groupings of numbers so again you can use whatever you want here well, i shouldn't say that there's a certain method you have to use there but you get the idea so i got that and i'm just gonna say plus dot jpeg so really we want this to be a string so which is why i put this we're just forcing this to be a string right here because it's going to be the name of our file when we save it so we're just going to input image name and that's just going to name it give it a unique id 
throw dot jpeg on the end so it saves as a jpeg so we got that so now we're almost there say with opens so we're going to open a file so we're going to say image name and we want oops wb for write back so that we can write to we can write the file we're just going to call this one out file okay and again i'm just going to print to make it nice whoops this is this is going to be a console print so the user won't see this part though but we're going to say saving image and then we can just say image name like that so that will just show us in the console what we're saving and what the name of it is so again you can feel free to change any of this this is up to you guys so now we're using shutil and we're going to do copy file object because image name is going to be our object like fi or our file like object i think is believe what they say for shutil so for that we want to say r.raw, which isn't usually recommended for this, but that's what we're getting today. So there we go. So now we're saying print. Oh, I'm off the screen a little bit. Let me pull this up. There we go. Sorry if that was too much. We're, that's pretty much the end of it right there, though. So again, we're just saying with open image name right back as out file. So we're opening up a file to write to it. We're printing, uh, saving image. So this will just save it in the con this will write it in the console. And so we're just saying shutil.copy file object, and this will actually save it for us. So the only last thing we have to do in our bot, the uh, the saving image part is over. We just got to add our client.run here, and I'm just going to copy over my key. Don't try to steal my token, it'll be different by the time you get to it. So for our Discord bot, we just gotta let it know how we're running it. This just needs another space. So that's pretty much the whole thing. And we can run this if we want. Let me open up my Discord. So we can see Discord here. I just made a custom server. It's called bot testing. This is where I do my testing for bots and stuff like that. And I've already added the bot to my server. Again, not gonna go over that part, but very easy to find out how to do. So I just named it image bot. So if we go back to PyCharm, we're just going to run this. We're just going to run save image and we can pull this up here so we can see bot is ready. I can't, there we go, I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, cool. So now we have our server and we can see that image bot is online. So if we were just to type it out, test it, we could say dot save and there we go, we get expected no attachments detected. And in our console log, we get Error, no attachments. Good, that's what we wanted. So say we wanted to actually include an image. Let's say we want to show our friends lazy text object detect, TensorFlow object detection tutorial. We could do that. Great video, by the way, we'll check it out. <laughs> Such a plug. So all you gotta do is in the comment box, you just gotta say dot save. This will work as the command. So then we'll upload it. And so that will go, there's no feedback in the actual chat, but again, you could add that. Um, so that's been in there. And if we see over here, we're saving image to this long strand of text. So I know that's not useful for every case, but there's lots of ways you could change it. You could just give it a straight name if you wanted to, but for our purposes, that is good. And up here in the corner, you'll see that we actually have the 715 blah, blah, blah. That's our image. So we can click on this can't see how well I can see it. And there we go. This is part of our file directory now. Let me see if I can actually find our, oh, here it is. So this is the actual file directory of the project, the project directory of the file, huh, same thing. So we can see right here, we have our JPEG. And you probably can't see that, sorry. But there you go, same thing. So we have successfully saved an image from Discord chat using a bot, which is really cool. So a couple of things to point out, this program does not check to make sure that what you have attached is an image. So this could clearly be a security flaw. I'm not exactly sure how someone would spoof it, but someone could upload a file. It's not going to check for a file. It does check to make sure that it has URL in there though. So I'm sure there's ways to spoof that. So if you're going to be using this on a bigger public scale or not just with your friends or anything like that, definitely make sure you have everything set up that you need to. That's on you, not me fair warning this program does not check to see if you have 
multiple images. Although if you do upload multiple images, I can show you what happens. Let me just get uh, pictures out here. Sorry, my, I'm still trying to figure out on how to do this whole screen zoom in. Um, let's see, I grab two pictures. These are just my thumbnails. Let's grab these two pictures. And let's upload them to Discord. We can say, if you want to save both of these, we can say dot save on both. There we go. So you have to say it both like that because attachments are saved separately. And if I pull up the console, you can see here, if you save these images and up here, they have been saved. So that works for that. But other than that, that's pretty much the whole tutorial. Pretty simple bot. Uh, this code will be posted in on my GitHub, and I'll put that in the link in the description. Again, the original author will also be posted. This is just kind of a way to clean it up and make it more modern. Uh, I had to fix a few things too. But again, feel free to create pull requests, use it in your own projects, whatever you want to do. Other than that, thank you for watching. If this helped you out, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.